All right, it is March 18th, 2024, and this is um, a fun hallway hangout to chat about release squads. And it's, I want it to take a ask me anything style, so very question focused. Um, but to set the stage, I did want to go through some quick slides just to kind of help um, explain how WordPress is made <laughs> and like give some at least bearings for it. Um, if folks would like to hear more, I can go in any direction. So let me share my screen. Sweet. All right, can you all see this glorious, ridiculous slides? Great. <laughs> so let's chat about WordPress releases. Um, to start, who am I? Um, I'm Anne McCarthy. I'm a product wrangler at Automatic. Um, I'm a sponsor contributor to WordPress from Automatic. Um, and I've been a repeat release squad member since 5.9, which is wild. Um, and so, you know, in preparation for this, I was like, I don't, I don't know if I know all the answers, but I've also had a lot of experience. So hopefully um, if there's any, any other folks who are on the call who've been on release squads, I welcome you to chime in. Um, and yeah, I can talk about any of my experiences with any of those releases. Um, so um, let's see what, there we go. Okay. So releases, um, there are about three or four releases per year. Um, 600 plus contributors all work together. Um, about That's about per the release. I took an average. Um, the last release said 600 plus um, per release, which is wild. So I think sometimes when you think about releases, we think about the release squads and which is a smaller group of people. Um, but there's also a huge contributor base that brings into each WordPress release. Um, and that is everything from, we'll get into kind of the different roles, but um, marketing, testing, opening bugs, like all that stuff is very much appreciated and counted and part of what makes a release great. Um, and this mentorship program is a prime example of that. There's a lot of ways to get involved. Um, there are 100 million plus downloads of the last release. So a fun thing that ends up happening during the final release party that we have. So each um, part of the release cycle, we all come together in Slack and um, anyone can join that. Um, we'll look at the counter. There's actually a counter. And I just checked that before I did this presentation and 100 million plus um, of WordPress 6.4, which is wild. It's really amazing to work on software that is this um, expansive. Let me check the chat. I love that people are chiming in. Very cool. Um, so the, each release, sorry, let me move our beautiful photos. There we go. Um, I want to make sure the recording has all of it. Each release has a rhythm to it and a squad behind it. Um, and I really mean a rhythm. Like I kind of plan my travel and my vacation <laughs> around releases because there really is like this really big buildup and then like kind of a, a like quiet period and um, times where, you know, things are scrutinized in a, to a degree that they're not always. So um, the branch, which is like the next release um, opens when the last release hits what's called the RC, which is the release candidate period. Um, and so that opens then, then there's like a couple month period um, where you will see road mapping done until you hit beta one, which is the first really big milestone. And beta one is kind of like the package. We think we're there. There might be some question marks where we're, we've shipped some stuff, but we're not sure if, you know, when it broadens up to the world um, for people who want to test beta one, um, how it will land. And so that's a really key window of time where you will see a lot of testing, a lot of debating, a lot of conversation around issues. Um, this is typically between the beta one period um, and RC one where really hard decisions are made to either pull features, punt features, um, or making changes to how it's how the features are working. So this is a very key period that you'll see people testing a lot. And then the same thing is true of the release candidate one. And the release candidate, um, there's also three or four betas depending upon um, how things are going. So each week on Tuesday, there's like a, a little uh, early release. That's what the beta is leading up to the big release day that allows people to download and test um, across their environments whether you're like a big host or um, someone like me. Um, and then RC1 is basically we're in a state of um, seriousness. It's like, okay, we've, we've basically stabilized the features we want to see. We think this is good to go. Um, this is like release ready material. So release candidate one. Um, and at this point, there are some rules and traditions and it's very ritualistic. That's why I talk about like the rhythm where after RC1, um, rather than just committing a PR or code to the release, you actually have to have two people sign off on it. Um, it's very much more stringent. You cannot um, have any bug fixes that um, go outside of the release. Like it's very narrow. 
um, what you can actually uh, ship code for. And that's intentional because we're basically saying this is ready to go. Um, then release day, the pieces come together. I am either typically really nervous <laughs> on release day or super calm. And there's typically a dry run done before um, for like the coding pieces and making sure things are good to go. Um, but yeah, I have had very split reactions where like I didn't sleep the night before release. And then I've had some where it's just been super calm and I'm sipping on my coffee and not worried about it. So what are some of the roles? Um, these are the different roles that, um, make sure there you go, um, that I wrote down from this last release squad. There are at times, um, there have been, I think there's been an accessibility lead. There's also a theme um, lead whenever we do a default theme. Um, so there are different roles that are outside of this, but this is kind of the main one. So there's a release lead. This seems to almost always be Matt. <laughs> um, I don't want to speak for certainty, but that's something I noticed when I was looking back through the last couple. Um, release coordinators act as I've done that once, and you're basically looking over the group, making sure things are moving at the right time, the right pace, um, surfacing decisions that need to be need to be made, um, bringing in project leadership when you need to. It's kind of like you're organizing and facilitating, and they often run the release parties, which happen in Slack. Um, the tech, there's both editor and core. I merge them into one because it's all WordPress, but basically different focus areas. Um, and so we have folks who are um, technical who help back work code um, and bring it into the release and, and package the release up. Um, there is also marketing. So whether it comes to writing the about page for a release, the announcements on WordPress org news, um, amplifying messaging, all sorts of stuff. Um, marketing is very much a key part of the release. Um, we can create as much as we want, but we need to make sure to tell people about it. Um, we have triage, which is um, a role that I have often been in, which is also split between editor and core. Um, and that basically involves like you are <laughs> testing a bunch, you are um, engaging in a lot of different issues to, to either rule out or rule in if it impacts the release. And a lot of it, um, in my opinion, you cut across a lot of the different release squads because you're triaging what's coming in, you're trying to figure out what's important, and then you might need to surface it to the tech leads or the release coordinator if it's a really bad issue um, and bug. And so you, I, I think it's a really fun role. You get to kind of have to have some depth of knowledge across the release, um, the same way as the tech leads um, and release coordinators, but you're not in like uh, decision-making mode. <laughs> um, you kind of get to um, surface things more. Um, design, very high impact as well. I mean, all of these are incredibly high impact. Um, I could rant about each of them. Um, design gets to work on everything from um, designing the about page to helping create marketing materials um, to helping jump in when there's a, a big design decision. So there have been times, um, WordPress 5.9 comes to mind, where you know we had to make a, a tough group decision and part of that was talking to design leads and figuring out um, what to do with the release. And so design comes in both across the, the different experiences and helps kind of guide things, especially when it comes to decisions that aren't just technical. Um, documentation, whew, lots to do with documentation. Every release there is stuff to be updated. Um, I would say that there's kind of a, a rough split between user docs, so updating things that impacts the support docs and then um, dev docs. And that includes developer notes that you see posted on make core. So with each feature, whether it's um, solely user facing or deeply technical documentation is needed to allow folks to um, adapt and use and understand what's being built. Um, so documentation um, is a huge role. Um, test is uh, also been a test lead. Um, I Testing is just like the bread and butter of the release cycle. It's very, um, once beta one hits, you're both trying to encourage testing across the release and across the community. Um, and making it really easy to spin up a site, walk through the steps, understand the feature, understand what even to test, um, and also to do a lot of testing on your own. Um, and it's just a very impactful role um, to help us make critical decisions. You have to test, you have to find the problems, you have to find the edge cases. Um, performance is newer. Um, a lot of this has to do with benchmarking. So a lot of the times the performance leads We'll test each, um, like beta one, beta two, beta three, RC one, RC two, RC three, like they'll test each stage of it to see if there are any regressions 
um, doing a lot of benchmarking. Um, there's also a, a lot of work done to ensure that features get in for the release around performance. Um, and this has been a hugely helpful role to have in place um, because you do need a certain lens of looking at things. And it's, it's easy to talk about all the features, but it's really important to have a pulse on performance. Um, and across all these roles, there is expectation of um, testing, working with others. Um, the lines are not super firm. Like we should all be kind of <laughs> looking at the same features together and learning and um, working together as a squad. So how do you join? Um, and this is how to join a release. Um, squads specifically, anyone can join a release by helping with different issues. But for the squad in particular, um, a call is put out a few months before the release, um, basically asking folks to join. And you can chime in in the comments being like, this is a role I'm interested in. Um, I usually share previously what would share my experience. Like I've done this role. I'm interested in this. I, I probably would need mentorship. Um, but typically a release looks for an established community member to contribute um, who can reliably show up because this is a long cycle. Um, it is can be tricky to do, um, especially if you're volunteering. Um, and at the same time, though, there's also mentors. So I actually have mentored folks with each, I think the last at least three or four releases have had someone that I'm mentoring who's shadowing me. So I wanted to call that out too, um, that even if, you know, you can't be um, fully on the release squad, there is little mini squads within where we do mentorship. Um, I actually just pinged um, one this morning before jumping on here. <laughs> So how do you know what to do? This is a, I added this question in just because it's something that I, when I first had an inkling of joining a release squad, I was like, I don't, where do I, how do I start? Like, can I read about this? Like, it kind of felt like um, so um, far away. And I was just talking to a contributor last week who's been a part of the project for a long, long time. And they were just like, yeah, I didn't know I had it, what, what it took to be on a release squad. And so I think there's a lot of like, um, mystery surrounding early squads. And so to help demystify it, I wanted to bring this up. Um, and honestly, a lot of it comes down to like documentation, which I call like living documentation. Like I updated one of the documentations this past time around and like we've made adjustments um, this release cycle because each release cycle is different. Um, mentorship, which I talked about before, I have been very lucky to be mentored by folks and like the release squads are very welcoming and um, if you have a question, someone else probably does too. Um, group discussions. So when, when an issue is raised and we're trying to figure things out, um, there are folks who um, will often alert folks and bring things in and start the group talk conversation. Um, and the last thing I'll say is like lived experience. And so because there is a rhythm, because there is um, kind of a way of approaching this, um, there is a lot to be said for the lived experience of being in a release squad. And we, we are very fortunate as an open source project to have WordPress historians who have been around for so long, um, there's very little they have not seen before. And um, it's very, yeah, it's very helpful to have folks, even though I've been on release squad a number of times, like I still, there are moments when I'm like, oh good, like this person's typing, like I wanna know what they think um, because um, yeah, there's a lot to the history of the project at this point with a 20 year project. So what goes into a release? Roadmaps are shared um, in anticipation of release that bring together plan initiatives across the community. Um, I have helped gather those the last couple releases and it's very ad hoc. It's like dropping into a different channel, being like, what are you working on? What are we working on? Like kind of going through and compiling it all, having folks review it. It's very um, community oriented um, and not everything makes the cut. So that's where there's an art and a science to it. So we might plan something for release. And then as we get closer, it's like, oof, no, we need more time. Um, or, you know, we didn't get a good design solution for this. We need to pull it. So that is my very brief, or actually it may be not as very brief <laughs> presentation, um, to kind of set the stage. And I would love to know like what questions you all have. If what I said was absolute gibberish, I can also, um, you know, slow it back down and talk about different parts. Um, but yeah, I would love to know what questions folks have. I'm gonna stop sharing. I'm also gonna drop in to the chat, if I can find it, um, a link to the documentation for the release cycle, just cause I sometimes like to be 
like to read things, so. Awesome, wow, we have folks from all over the place. Thank you for writing down the RC thing. Sorry about that. Shorthand gets me every time. Very cool. I'm waving at all of you in the chat. Does anyone have any questions? You can unmute or you can drop into the chat. Otherwise I can rant about like hard decisions that were made and how they're made or whatever might be interesting. I had a question about the, the roadmaps for the um, releases. I, I'm not sure where mm -hmm. you would find the information. Uh, Seth, do you want to quickly introduce yourself first for Anne? So, oh, hey, Anne, uh, nice to see you. I, I know you're uh, very, uh, well involved with the project. My name is Seth. Um, interested in developer uh, documentation and some of the other documentation, nice. and just making making WordPress a little bit easier for anybody that wants to use it. Really, Gee, but yeah, no, we need we need more people for sure. Yeah, and and for from the documentation standpoint, I, I get that. Then when things change every you know every release, that that's definitely going to be an ongoing you know concern. So. Um, mm -hmm. I would know that roadmaps I was curious about and um, had one more. The roadmaps are tricky because as I said, they can change. So I, I do launch um, a thing called the source of truth, which is very internal. I was hesitant to mention it because it's meant for like WordPress contributors. It's not meant for like going far and wide, but that gives like a rundown of like, this is what's going on in the release. These are the details. This is what it looks like. Here's the issue you can go learn more in. And that's typically whenever I'm working with the documentation folks, that's typically where I will share it. Um, I was just working with Estella on that last week. Okay, for sure. Yeah, and that I guess can can change depending on what features are are you know. I know there's something with the font library or or whatnot this mm -hmm. time around. So, yeah. Does that answer your question? Like, basically, how to follow along for documentation was my understanding. I uh, I guess so. Sure. Yeah. No, I was just curious about where the um, where the roadmap or or the for the re releases or whatever. I guess the. Mm -hmm. you know, the guidelines per release, where you would find that information or what the objectives maybe were. I guess if you follow along the whole time, you can kind of understand that along the way, but. No, that's something we need to improve. Um, that's something that like, I feel like I've gotten a lot of feedback on. Like, I think the roadmap posts, there's a lot we could do to make them better. And I think a lot of that would come in personally from, um, I do try to involve project leadership as much as possible. Um, and so a lot of it is a combination of like, this is what project leadership is wanting to see um, combined with, this is what like these components are working on. This is what these different teams like the performance team is working on um, and kind of bringing that in together into whenever I'm writing the roadmap post, I try to offer an initial narrative based on what I'm seeing and based on what I like the conversations that I'm having with project leadership, where we are with the phases of Gutenberg, like all that sort of stuff. Um, but yeah, it's something we, we can do a lot, a lot better on. Um, and yeah, as you mentioned, it's kind of like you had the roadmap post and then it's like, you're waiting until beta one, <laughs> like it can be a big drop off. And I don't know if we need to do like update to the roadmap or, or some sort of follow-up post ahead of time. Um, but yeah, that definitely, that definitely comes up. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for your help with all the documentation. It's huge, ton of work. <laughs> yeah, it's, we'll see. I'm doing as much as I can, you know? <laughs> yeah, I hear that. Um, um, thanks a lot for, for the presentation. I have a question, at least for the part that you, you might answer, maybe more related to, what you do for folks who want to contribute to a release for the different type of roles. What is the realistic, useful time commitment that they should mm -hmm. like agree on? Because I imagine that, I don't know, maybe, yes, even doing one test, it's uh, like it's already helping, but it's not enough to ensure that uh, it has been uh, tested enough. Yeah, that's it. I will 
Yeah, that's a great question. I will say we have started um, in, a, in a way that's really good, doubling up on roles and having redundancy in a way that we didn't have before. And I bring that up because there have been situations, like I will say, speaking personally, like I had a situation last week where I was out for much of last week very suddenly with an infection and was like, I can't help. Like I, I was so out of it. I was like, I can't help with the release the next couple of days. But like, it didn't matter because we had redundancy. We had multiple people. And so if stuff happens, stuff happens. And that's part of why there is redundancy and mentors and all that sort of stuff. Um, in terms of time commitment, it's a fair amount. It depends on the role and depends on the release, which I hate saying, but it's true. Um, some releases are going to require a lot more design input. Um, some releases like WordPress 5.9, when it was introducing the site editor, tons of documentation updates. Like, I mean, like so much user docs that we needed, so many dev docs that we needed. Um, this release is very developer focused. So we need a lot of developer documentation. There are some like user changing things like the font library. Um, and there's not as much for design right now. Like I would say design is like, there's still a lot to do, but it's not as like wild as it has been at previous points. Um, but yeah, generally speaking, I would say you need to reserve two, two and a half months um, each week. So it's not like you can just bust everything out all at once. Like I would say it, you need to be pretty consistently involved each week. Um, and that's involving, that's basically including the beta period is about a month, the RC period is about a month. And then I would say like, oh geez, <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> that was fun. Okay, wow. Um, let me not use my hands. Um, but yeah, the, the, the other two weeks are like the two weeks before beta one, because that's when you're like getting into like the headspace of the, of the release um, and things are gearing up. And like, that's a pretty conservative estimate. And I would say per week, um, I actually got feedback from someone that they were like, I'm spending 10 hours each week, like trying to, trying to help with this. This is like someone I was mentoring. And I still feel like I'm behind. And that was really good feedback. Like I can be a bit too, it's too, it's very easy for me to keep on top of a lot of the issues. And I know that that is not always the case for other folks. And that's because I'm regularly in the flow. I'm not having to jump into the flow. I'm just continuing what I'm already doing. Um, so I would say probably like 10 to 15 hours a week. Um, and if, for the tech roles, I would say even more. Um, I think those are typically, yeah, can require more more work, especially if like technical blockers come up. Okay, thanks. Is there a 6.4.4 release? It's added to the milestone. Oh, yeah, so this is, um, what you're describing is called a minor release. And so we have major releases and we have minor releases. Um, and there is debate right now. The last thing I saw, I'm like, honestly looking it up right now, is that there's like, there are a couple issues that we were trying to get in. Um, and the last time this was discussed was on March 6th. So um, there was discussion around a couple of issues that were coming up. And typically a minor release is like a follow-up with a handful of bugs. It's not meant to introduce new features. It's very bug focused, very maintenance focused. And um, there's already been like a 6 point, you know, 4 point 1, point 2, point 3. And so those are like the point releases. They're minor releases. Um, you'll see that used interchangeably, point and minor. Um, and there reaches a point where it's like, do we do the work of a minor release or do we wait for the major release? And there is an issue right now that um, I can't remember all the details of, but a lot of folks are like, um, it has to do with uploading or something like that. I was just looking at um, recently, but a lot of folks want that done sooner. They're like, I know it's just a couple of weeks until the major release, but like, we need to get this fixed now. And so there's often a debate and that's where like, it's an art and a science. And also we need people who can, who can do the work. And when they were in the middle of a major release cycle, it can become harder to find people to shepherd and move along the minor releases. So um, I have not seen, I actually maintain a page that's called like versions in WordPress and it's Gutenberg versions that make it into the major version. So I've been keeping an eye on this stuff and I've not seen movement. So um, I have a feeling it's being debated very openly, which I think is like a fun, um, like I'll share my screen real quick again, but this is like the release squad channel um, for 6.4. And you can see, um, like, Hey, we've got two bugs, both have been fixed. Um, but like, what should we do? And there's like a huge, 
you know, debate, <laughs> basically, of people talking this through. Um, so this is what I love about WordPress and what I think is really cool is like so much of the conversation just happens where anyone can follow them. And you can see this was originally brought up in the 6.5 channel and then was brought over to the 6.4. Um, and so I think at this point, I don't anticipate a 6.4.4. Um, I would expect um, 6.5. And I think this person's basically asking, how can I milestone them to move them over? But I'm not sure. I haven't caught up on this. This was, um, I am zeroed in. <laughs> I'm part of the problem. I focus on the major release and I'm paying attention to that um, other than the minor. But yeah, this is like, we also do weekly check-ins. I think this is kind of cool to see. So you have like emoji weekly check-ins. And so it's like, hey, core tech leads, how are you feeling? And then people react with an emoji and then can add more context. Um, and so you can see a discussion there. Um, same with editor. Um, you know, Dave is hard at work. Um, core triage. Um, and this is this was just shared. So people are all over the place, time zone wise. So it's not uncommon at this point. This is very early to not see reactions, but you can see I added my reaction. Sometimes I'll add comments. Like I might say, um, you know, for example, probably should say this, feeling good um, to the point that we skipped. Um, yes. And this is all, all of these updates are for the release coordinators. And also just generally, I read them through. I try and see like where are we at with these things and, and also check in um, just to see if there's any concerns. Because if someone, if performance, you know, responded with red, that's something for us all to be aware of and to talk about. And same with tests. Um, I don't think default theme should be on there. I think that's a copy paste. Um, but yeah, we share updates in here. Some behind the scenes fun. You can see how many ridiculous channels I'm in. <clears throat> Any other question? Yeah, of course. I'll talk a I'm little bit about the asked... release. Oh, please. Yeah. And uh, sorry, sorry, Anne. Uh, I'm mm -hmm. going to ask a question which I think is in the minds of a lot of people here, especially the mentees. So we have, mm -hmm. we've had a, a bunch of people, including a few people here in this call who've made a lot of core contributions in the past few weeks. How do they get into the release squad? What is the process? Yeah. Yeah, I think you shared a, a bit about question. it. Maybe you could, if you could like elaborate on that specifically. So, yeah, I mean, I think part of it is you first and foremost, like put your hand up. Like when you see the, the, the post go live of people asking for it, which can be tricky to find, that might be something hard that we can like surface going forward is like when those calls go out. Um, cause it is just in the flood of make core, which, you know, love and hate. Um, I think it never hurts to volunteer. I think it's good to talk to other folks who are maybe in the release. Like I can speak to the roles that I've been in. Um, so like the coordinator role tests, um, documentation, I think, and, um, editor triage are the roles that I have typically done. Um, and for a lot of those, like, I do think it's something that is very open to anyone. Like I am, I would never necessarily volunteer for design because I'm not a designer. Same with the developer side. So there are some that split out, but I think there are a number of roles that like anyone can do and anyone can help with. Um, and ultimately, I think you could start if you're, you know, new to it. Maybe you don't have as much experience, but you really want to be on a release squad. Um, raise your hand, state that, be like, you know, I'm new to this. I've never been on a release squad before. I really want to do it. And I would know if you're open to mentorship, because what you could do is you could shadow someone for a release, which would be way less of a time commitment, um, and then jump into, okay, I'm going to try and do it for the next release. And that's what's going on now. So I am um, working with someone who is, uh, there's three of us, one person's new, the other person wants to do it for the next release. And so I'm kind of training both of them, but like, you know, we're working together as the two of us. And then this other person is there. Um, and we're just sharing everything like in DMs, like just talking through stuff and checking in with them. Um, and so that's a neat part of this is you can kind of cycle through and like train up. Um, otherwise, I would highly recommend whatever area you want to get involved in, if it's docs, if it's testing, if it's marketing, like get started with the teams now, get experience, talk to folks who've been on release squads and the roles that you want to be in um, and get experience working in those like systems. So like documentation, 
where do you open an, an issue if you want to update the documentation? How do you get access? Um, how do you know what's changing? Like get into that stream of information, start asking questions. Um, and I think you can pretty, pretty easily and just follow a release. Like even if it's passive and you jump in for an hour once a week, like I think um, you can get a lot of experience just by, by looking at what's out in the open. Um, I don't know if that answers the question, but that's kind of what I would suggest doing. And I want to be cognizant that a lot of this comes from a place of like, I'm sponsoring the project and I would be um, remiss not to mention that. Like it is a privilege to be sponsored in the project. I am um, paid to work on it. And so I think it's different for folks when you don't have that sponsorship. And so um, in that case, I would probably recommend doing like a shadowing first and then trying to join um, as you can. Um, but a lot goes into the releases. Like I know there's a release squad, but there are 600 plus people who contribute, who are, you know, doing their work too. Like, I think it's a huge thing. Even if, you know, you find a bug, you update a doc, like all that stuff helps. And all that is part of the release. Like if you want to be part of a release. Thank you. I think that was a very detailed answer. Thank you so much. <laughs> okay, good. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I do have a quick follow-up question. Though. It's it's something that I struggle with a bit. How do you, what is the best way? Actually, I have two questions. I'm going to ask the first one, uh, which I think is more relevant again for this group. Mm -hmm. um, so again, I, I believe you touched upon this briefly in your presentation, but how are the features that, that are going to come up in the release decided? I mean, what is the process for it? And uh, that's the first question. And second is, how does one follow along? So like, uh, uh, mm -hmm. I mean, in in many cases, a bunch of folks even in in our mentorship program and I'm since I'm I work on five with future I work with organizations these folks like uh, they want to see what's happening with the release and they find it very difficult to follow so what is the best way to follow what's happening what are the latest updates I mean I I know you share the source of truth talk which is excellent but how do you follow oh, the process yeah. as things mm -hmm. get developed so yeah those those are my yeah questions. that's a great question um there's a few ways so in there's the roadmap post, which you, you will see links to different issues. So like when you're looking at a roadmap post, let me like pull up, um, I'm going to cheat and share my screen. Um, so like each roadmap post, I love to link to things. That is something that if you hang out with me, you will learn. Um, I try to have like follow this tracking issue for more information. So a lot of this is like everything is linked where it's like, I want there to be, um, the ability to like link off, um, and from these, like you'll see pattern overrides, Epic, WordPress 6.5. This was punted. But if you scroll down, all the way down, sorry to zoom that quick, um, you'll see that there's a new issue for 6.6 .6 already. So like you'll see the developers typically and the folks working on these issues are typically pretty good, not always at like following up, closing things out, linking to where things are coming next. But this is something, you know, anyone can look at right now. Um, I, we do need to change this name because we're not trying to call it pattern overrides, but um, this is already slated for WordPress 6.6. .6. So this is a way to follow along, see what's coming next, see what's going on now. And throughout the roadmap posts, there are just links to this. So you'll see in this, I, I try to, there, you know, there might be situations where I don't, but as much as possible, I'm trying to put what's called like a tracking issue. Um, and there are also like epics, which is what you're seeing here, um, type epic. So a little life hack for anyone here. Um, if you want to follow along on like big features that are happening, there's overview issues. So there's an overview label. And there's also, I have a presentation on learning WordPress around this, but there's an overview label, which goes through what I call like big cross multiple releases um, kinds of stuff. Like this is not slated for a particular release. It's not scoped for a particular release. This is just like an area of work. And there are 56 issues open around that. It's a lot. <laughs> um, you then have what's called the epic issues, which is like slated for this release. Um, there's also tracking issues. And these are also kind of more actionable and more focused on um, a specific feature. So like, you know, or for this, this example, like 6.5 dev note tracking issue. Um, but you'll see like tracking issues. These are for marketing, for example, for the release, um, for this release. So you actually see this like live, but those three labels, Epic, Overview, and Tracking are really helpful. If you're trying to focus on release, I would look at the Epic tag. If you're trying to look at general bodies of work, like that's what I do whenever I'm writing these roadmap posts. Um, I'm trying to see the bodies of work, figure out what's actually in an actual state, pinging lots of people, having lots of conversations. 
um, and kind of going from there. But this is a fun, I'll drop this in the chat. This is like a fun way to see things before it goes live on social. Um, but yeah, you asked like how, how is the roadmap post made? Is that right? Uh, more along that definitely, but more along lines of like uh, more than the the process of the creating the post. How are the features like for instance we have font library coming up mm. in six point five right? So like how is the process? How is the process of deciding features for each of these? Like how does it happen? That was more my question. That's a great question. Um, a combination. I really should write a blog post about this um, or put it document it somewhere. Um, a combination of. Matthias, who was the project architect of Gutenberg. So previously he wrote the roadmap post and then I kind of, you know, have uh, tried to help out there because it's a lot of work and um, he's a busy guy. <laughs> he's on sabbatical right now, but so there's a combination of um, Matthias, Matt, um, Josefa, like there's, there's project leadership that will come in and, and say like, these are things we are aiming for for the release. Um, there's also like, the team so like the performance team in particular often has features that they want to see in on the next release same with the broader core team there's a lot of excuse me stuff around like rollback um plug dependencies different apis like um php compatibility um there's a lot of stuff <laughs> um and so it's a combination of like these are what the teams are working on and those are decided by the teams and so we'll see what surfaces um, and then also I, I call this like, this is what the roadmap is missing the most. And this is like things that randomly get momentum. Like, you know, somehow a group of contributors come together. They're like, we're going to solve this problem right now. And suddenly it's like, whoa, is this ready for the release? Awesome. And that may not surface on the roadmap. Um, and that doesn't happen super often, but it does happen where, you know, all of a sudden someone gets a breakthrough and is able to get things in. And that's where, you know, you have the roadmap post, we're trying to share a vision, but then it might shift <laughs> at the time of the release. And that's where it depends on like what made it through. Did anything new jump through that all of a sudden is ready? Um, and that happens a fair amount. Like developers might think this will take me, you know, three months longer to do. And then it doesn't. And then also vice versa. <laughs> oh yeah, I can do that in three months. And then all of a sudden it's like, nope, never mind. It's like, I need three more. Um, and like the font library is a great example of that where um, it had been slated for a number of releases and just continued to kind of reach that beta RC period and run into trouble. Um, and yeah, that's been a really tricky one to get right because it's involved a lot of different people um, and has, I think done multiple, has been through multiple different rewrites like from a code perspective, um, which is wild. And a lot of folks um, have contributed to that. So yeah, at the end of the day, like I, basically I'm pulling from these different groups. And then a lot of times like a Matthias, um, someone in leadership gives a final like yes or no. And a lot of times I'm seeking up with them before I even go out and try to write a post, um, kind of sharing priorities. We get people like kind of like that Epic issue. Folks will start writing Epic issues for a particular release. And that makes it a lot easier. And this is new, the Epic issues in GitHub at least. And then in track, you can see everything listed by milestone. So when you're looking at track, um, kind of what we were talking about earlier with the 6.4.4, um, you'll still see milestone issues of like, this is what we're, what's like moved to 6.6. .6. And one of the things that is confusing is sometimes things are just like passively moved. So you'll see, like, if you look at an issue, you're like, oh, cool, this is for 6.6, .6. awesome. You click on it in track or in GitHub and then you're like, oh, okay, this has been open for three years and every release, it's like, maybe if someone will do it, like that's like the random momentum, someone can come in and get it done, but like, it's hard to know if they will. So sometimes it just gets punted. It's like, didn't make it for 6.4, moved to 6.5, nothing happens. And it's like, nothing happened for 6.5, moved to 6.6. <laughs> so there's kind of like a hot potato effect that ends up happening. We have a couple of questions in chat. I think uh, Seth specifically oh, asked about the Epic issue. Yeah, yeah. What is an Epic and a WordPress release? I think you want more info on that. Um, yeah, it's a new, so this is like gets into project management stuff, but it's basically uh, a focused scoped issue for a feature for the next release. So it's specifically um, an overview issue, a tracking issue, that kind of style of like, this is what we're trying to aim for, for 6.6. .6. And that, that doesn't include stuff that's like, 
Um, like for example, an overview issue will describe the longer term vision. Um, an epic issue will be very, it'll be like part of that vision. <laughs> it's not gonna list out everything. It's not gonna go through everything that um, might go into the release or go into the feature. Um, so that's like the distinction there is an epic is more focused and tailored to the release. Does that answer your question, Seth? If not, please. Also, I'm so sorry I missed these. Um, are there any roles? Thank you. Yes, for yeah. sure. Awesome. Like mini, yeah, mini this is newer. Milestone, if you will, it's like a mini milestone sort of, or? Yeah, kind of, yeah. It's like for a specific feature. So like you'll see epic issues for specific features um, rather than like, you're not gonna see an epic issue for WordPress 6.6, .6, if that makes sense. You're gonna see an epic issue for, um, you know, overriding content and patterns for 6.6 .6, or like font library follow-ups uh, for 6.6. .6. Um, are there any roles that are more complicated to fill? For example, you get a lot of folks volunteering for testing and not enough for marketing. And what are the most populated wanted roles that contributors want to volunteer for? Ooh. I would say the ones that are more complicated to fill are the ones that you need, um, like for certain roles, for the tech lead roles, like you need commit access typically. You need like special privilege or um, you need level of uh, level of knowledge of how like the WordPress code base works, how you backport code from Gutenberg to core, all that sort of stuff. I would say those are more complicated. Like you, a track record experience access um, is needed more in those roles. Um, otherwise, let me think about this. Design can also be tricky. Um, I think for the same reasons. Um, same with performance. Like I think there's, you know, you have to know how to run performance tests. You have to know how to spot a performance regression. Um, and ideally you could track down the PR that the pull request, the code that led to that regression. Um, and I don't know how necessary that is, but that is something that I think can be tricky. Um, and what are the most populated wanted roles? I would say, gosh, I don't know if there's like, and over the top, like wanted like roles. Um, I'm not involved in the like release squad selection stuff. <laughs> so I've never looked at like a spreadsheet and been like, oh my gosh, like how are we gonna pick from the 20 people who wanna do tests? Um, so yeah, I don't know if I can answer that. I'm gonna go with an, I don't know. Yeah, I have no problem with a, what I have a whole Google doc that's like questions I don't know I need to research <laughs> that I have been waiting to type in. <laughs> no, no, thanks a lot, I was just curious. And yeah. um, I don't know, it's a perfect answer. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> uh, as a follow-up to that, I'm going to ask a bit of a controversial question, if you don't mind. Do it. Uh, I love it. So there's folks that keep sharing, I want, I want this feature in WordPress. And, and, and again, you you mentioned to this mm. in passing, like there are these track tickets that like folks are really passionate about, which sort of like don't get picked up. Um, mm. What... Like what can, I mean, let's say I have, I have an issue like that, which I really want to like get, get folks to see and I want to advocate for it. And so what, what should I do as a, as a contributor who's really passionate about it? And, and like, what, what is the best way to get it noticed? And, and maybe, maybe it doesn't get noticed. Maybe like you said, it doesn't, you know, um, meet the roadmap, but like as a general process, what is the, what is the best way to go about it? Yeah. I mean, I can. If it's helpful, I can speak to like an issue that's near and dear to me that like has not been solved <laughs> as an example. Yeah, I think that that's a good way to to summarize it because I can speak from like personal um, experience. So let's see, I'm like, which one do I want to pick? Um, we'll go with this one. So this is a, these are not my designs. I opened this issue in 2023, but these are not, a designer updated this. You can see it says edited. Um, James is a designer. So I want to be clear, this is not my work. <laughs> um, I don't want to take credit for that, um, which is also something funny that happens in here is all of a sudden my issue will be updated. So with a block theme, you have a style system and the styles can be set globally for the whole site. It can be locally just for one block. Um, it can be like across different blocks. So there's a lot of um, issues with this. So for example, let's say um, I open my site. I see uh, my site title is like, you know, I don't know, has like a link color that I don't like. 
Um, how do you know where to update it? Same with like paragraph. My paragraph's huge. How do I, how do I know where to change it? Um, there are moments when the styling system basically um, has a hierarchy and like things get inherited by the styling system. And I have, I used to run a, a outreach program related to the site editor development and getting feedback. And this is something that came up a lot. We would have a call for testing. I would run into it myself, like while writing the call for testing, where I'd be like, oh my gosh, like why, why won't this change? Why can't I change like this, you know, the size of whatever? And then I would find out it was set globally. And so that's why it was being overridden. And so the, the solution to this um, is like, I want to see a, 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 a hierarchy of the styles. Like I want to know when something's being inherited. And it's been a year. Like, I'm like, it's almost a year. Like, it's March 18th. This is March 18th. And like, this is, obviously, this is not as longstanding as some of the other issues, but this has been, you know, moved across the releases. Um, and it's a very real problem. And you can see these designs are kind of exploring what this might look like, um, but it hasn't moved forward. So what do I do, right? Like, how do I keep this top of mind? How do I check in with folks? And some of this requires letting go. Like I might run into this every single day, <laughs> but um, what I often do, and for this example, is um, I'm checking in with designers. So this is a design problem. I think that's one of the things we don't have a ton of design contributions. Um, designers, please, um, there's a huge realm for you to contribute there. Um, I think we see a lot more on the code side. We do have design contributions, but I would love to see um, even more. But there's just not a good design solution to this. And so I might run into it all the time. I might hear about it all the time. Um, you can see that my actual original issue, which was not as, I didn't even do this. This is not true. Okay. <laughs> um, designers have been updating this, which is beautiful. But yeah, we have continually, I think I mentioned this for one of the roadmap posts um, and it just, we can't get a good design solution. Like you can see there's like a attempt here um, so this is one example of like, I basically am checking with the designers. How is this going? Do you like this design solution? Does it have buy-in? Like, what are we, can we experiment? Can we get something like in the Gutenberg plugin? You can have, um, something in the experiment. So like, if you activate Gutenberg, there's a little experience thing and then you can like check off what you want to experiment with. Um, <clears throat> that's one way I've tried to see things, um, move forward. This is another one. Um, as you can tell, I can like literally pull them up. So like consolidating the various navigation modes. This just came up as a part of a hallway hangout on improving accessibility in the site editor. Um, I proposed a Gutenberg experiment. What if we like make it an experiment where we can like deprecate the navigation mode in favor of list view and focus mode? Like, what about that? Matthias, like, I love your thoughts. And I eventually like caught up with them <laughs> and followed up and was like, I don't, you know, bummer, but like also maybe there's room for this, right? Like um, there's a new appearance. Um, there's a new preferences for accessibility and appearance and separating out. Maybe this can be an accessibility setting. So a lot of it's like just keeping tabs and, and pushing. And also like there is a flow, there is a rhythm to the release and there is momentum. And there are times when you can kind of jump into that momentum when you're hitting similar issues. And so I recommend looking at our roadmap post, seeing if something, an issue you care deeply about, overlaps with a larger discussion and seeing if you can wedge it in there. And I'll show an example that's not mine. Um, so one of the things I'm not going to get into explaining this issue because it's very long, but um, CSS custom properties on body lead to DOM inheritance issues. So you can see this was originally reported in 2021. So we're coming up on three years. <laughs> and there's a lot of persistence here. A developer started working on it. Um, and you can see people are starting to chime in. There's a lot of like momentum gathering. Uh, I'm not going to try to summarize these comments, but um, you can basically see where there's discussions and you can see bumping this. This is still a problem for theme plugin authors. And I bring this up because this is a great example. Um, there are bugs and issues that I come across that I will just literally, when a new release comes out or an RC comes out, we like still a problem, like commenting on the issue. I, I retest it with the latest version. And that's really helpful from like a triage perspective, because I can go in and if I'm looking at an issue and it hasn't been touched, like let's pretend there's been no dialogue in three years. I might look at this and go, is this still a problem? Like, is this stale? Like three years is a long time. 
So anything you can do to like follow up on an issue, keep it relevant, share how it's still impacting you, ask other people to share um, goes a long way. I'll also note yeah, this must have come up at WordCamp US, like talk about it in person. <laughs> um, eventually, there's a new outreach group. And this is um, a general channel to raise issues or pull requests when someone is looking for feedback or testing. Um, and it's a good, there's also a block themers group, but there's 19 folks in here. Um, I wonder if this will show up. Yeah, so there's also a block themers group with 22 people. Um, be careful with who you ping with these, like it will ping everyone. So like, don't use this just like um, whenever you want. There's also like a huge, there's a triage team. So if you're running into an issue, like, you know, with the release 6.5, we're in a more intense part of the cycle, like use this sparingly. This pings the development team, AKA 246 people. Again, <laughs> please do not start going through issues and just pinging everyone. Like that will not help um, the cause. But in this case, um, I thought this was a great use for it. It's like pinging WordPress outreach. Like I managed to get a little traction on this last year, but it hasn't been discussed any further since. And so Mark chimed in and was like, hey, you know, maybe more people can look at this and test it. Um, and that has led to, um, you know, Raymond, who previously worked on the PR, kind of following up and like, I'm happy to reopen it. Like he didn't get a lot of testing done. Like if folks are willing to test it, like, <laughs> so it's kind of a funny, um, situation but this is one of the things I'd recommend is like find people who agree with you who are running into the same issue make sure you're sharing it regularly update it each release um and bring it up where you can and also honestly like at a certain point I hate to be like you know let it go but there there are, I cannot begin to tell you I probably have 200 issue issues open in github um like it, there are things that are just are not in a position to be fixed and a lot of that comes down to design issues or breaking changes. And there's always a reason for it, but I think continuing to share your pain points really helps. Um, does that, I know that was a very long-winded answer, but I think you kind of need to with these kinds of questions. Sorry, I was muted. I was just saying that you literally could not have explained it better. And that was the, <laughs> the, right. the most perfect answer. So thank you so much. I like to give examples because I think it's important to yeah. see yeah, that, the, the examples were the, were the best. And I think this, this recording is going to be super helpful for a bunch of people, uh, especially folks who are working on core in our core. So. Yeah, awesome. Yes. Uh, I think, oh. does anybody have any more questions? Okay, I have one more question. Sorry, I have all the questions today. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> because I'm very curious. <laughs> all right, so this is more of a general question. It's a follow-up of something that I asked earlier. Um, mm -hmm. again, there's a bunch of people in our cohort who are very new to the program. Like they may not have uh, a lot of coding experience, but they're interested, you know, uh, and some of them, they have like ambitions. And I know this from speaking with people, like they want to, they want to be involved in release, but they're like, they have not had any code contributions before. So for those people mm -hmm. who want to be involved, uh, what is the, what, what, what general advice would you have? Like, what is the pathway that they should follow in general? I know it's like is a broad question, but. Yeah, uh, coding, non-coding, anything. like Just a broad direction would be very helpful, I guess. Mm. Just to get more involved. Just generally, I'm just thinking, okay. Um, can you tell the coffee is still kicking in? Um, yeah, to get more involved. I mean, I'm a big believer in curating the information you passively consume. So like I showed you my Slack instance right there's a lot of random channels like i leave channels pretty regularly like the ones i'm in are things that i'm either actively interested in um and i would recommend joining slack joining meetings like people who lead the meetings curate the information for you there's a core meeting um that i highly recommend joining if you can make it if not like read the back scroll um but set up alert words like that is something if you're something there's you're interested in if you're like you want to get involved in design like um yeah, set up, I have a lot, I'm in a lot of different Slack instances, but I don't pay attention to them regularly. But I have spent a lot of time fine tuning the things that alert me. And so you can set up specific alert words um, to basically only alert you when X, Y, and Z happen. So like, um, I'm like, what's an example? Let me see if I can pull up um, an example without like sharing my 
DMs, one second. Um, I would highly recommend just thinking about that. I also, I think the Gutenberg Times does a great job of also curating information, like follow some newsletters, get some like passive information coming in and kind of see where um, things are happening. But don't overload yourself. Like I think the mistake a lot of people make is they join too many things <laughs> and then it's like, oh, it's so overwhelming. I'm never going to know. And it's like, no, 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 no. Like start where, what captures your attention right now? From what you know about the project, what is gathering your attention right now? Um, and then just slowly build up from there, make it sustainable. Cause ultimately you're just going to burn yourself out, but I'll show you an example. Um, this is in post status. So these are like my keywords. And so if you really want to alert me to a lot of things, go for it. But yeah, um, I work for automatic. So if someone mentions automatic, a lot of times like our products get mentioned. So I try to be a good automatician and help with the back Gutenberg block editor, Full site editing people still refer to the old term, FSC, site editor. These are all the different variations, block themes, AI, artificial intelligence. I just recently added those. So you'll see that like I regularly am updating stuff. So anytime someone mentions these things, it'll ping me and show that I have an alert. And I think it's something people don't use enough. Like we don't think about the tech that we're using. We think about like, oh, I got to keep up with all of it. And it's just not true. Um, I also recommend like looking at those epic and tracking issues and reading through the way contributors think about features and what they're working on. Um, look at the high level and um, yeah, try to try to pick an area that you'd like to move forward. Um, and there's also, a, I would be remiss to, there's a new contributor meeting as well that happens I think every couple of weeks. So you can always jump in there and get good guidance, but yeah. I, I think we have one coming up this week, if I'm not wrong. Oh, sweet, yeah. okay. Yeah, I never, I always get pinged because I have new contributor as one of my <laughs> alert words. And so every time the meeting comes up, yeah. um, I get pinged. Yes. But yeah, I, I am, I want to open myself up to like questions going forward. Like if you either are watching the recording or um, have a question for me after, I'm at A N N E Z A Z U, so Ann Zazu on Repisorg Slack. And you're welcome to ask questions there or in the mentorship channel. Like I'm not always someone who can think of questions on the spot. So I always welcome people to follow up after and i may not know all the answers but i will find them <laughs> sweet thank you all for joining this was really fun and um thank you I so appreciate much you all listening to me yeah. lecture yeah <laughs> sweet i'll thank see you, you all so in, much for in the meeting today yeah of course thank you. thanks thank for you. your questions Bye.